So in the last video, we talked about two key factors which make something a good nucleophile. We said that the conjugate base is always a stronger nucleophile than its conjugate acid. And secondly, we said that nucleophilicity increases as you go from right to left along the periodic table. Okay, So it's inversely correlated with electronegativity. In this video, we're going to continue talking about different trends which make for something a good nucleophile. And this is going to be talking about one of the most misunderstood elements of nucleophilicity, and that is the role of solvent. And when we're talking about solvent in nucleophilic substitution reactions, in particular substitution reactions, we're going to be talking about polar solvents in general. So polar solvents in general, because our nucleophiles are usually polar to some extent. And remember that like dissolves like. So we're not really going to be concerning ourselves with nonpolar solvents so much because as it turns out nonpolar solvents just aren't very good solvents for the types of substrates we use and the types of nucleophiles we use in nucleophilic substitution reactions. They just don't dissolve um, most charged nucleophiles very well. So we're going to discuss simply polar protic solvents and polar aprotic solvents. So there's two different types of, of solvents and let's just go through the trend first and then discuss exactly what it means. So polar protic and polar aprotic solvents. So the trend is this. As you go down the periodic table, you go from fluoride to chloride to bromide to iodide. Your nucleophilicity increases in a polar protic solvent as you go from fluoride to chloride to bromide to iodide. So in other words, this is the most nucleophilic and this is the least. And in a polar A protic solvent, this trend reverses itself. So fluoride is actually a better nucleophile than chloride, which is a better nucleophile than bromide, which is a better nucleophile than iodide. So F minus is the most nucleophilic and I minus is the least. So that's the trend, that's the periodic trend. Now let's actually talk about what this means and before we do that we should probably discuss what we mean we talk about a polar protic solvent. How do you recognize a polar protic solvent? Well a polar protic solvent is actually fairly easy to recognize. You have to look for an OH group that will that will cover 99% of the polar protic solvents we'll talk about. There's also polar protic solvents which have an NH group, but for our purposes, the most important are those which have an OH. So for example, water, H2O, is the most commonly um, discussed polar protic solvent that has, this, has an OH group present, actually has two OH bonds. And another example of a polar protic solvent would be methanol. And another one would be its higher cousin ethanol. We could also have, for example, acetic acid, CH3, C double bond O, OH, also a polar protic solvent. And note that they each have an OH group. And this is part of the reason why we discuss these as being polar protic solvents, because of the fact that we have an OH group, the H is the proton, and they're able to donate this proton under different conditions. But for our purposes, what's most important about these types of solvents is that we, they can participate in hydrogen bonding. So that is really the crux of the issue here. It's hydrogen bonding or no hydrogen bonding. If you have hydrogen bonding, you're going to have this effect where it's going to be fluoride less than chloride, less than bromide, less than iodine. If you don't have hydrogen bonding, it's going to be the opposite. So hydrogen bonding is the key. Why is hydrogen bonding the key? Well, let's think about what we mean. We're talking about hydrogen bonding. What's going on? Well, let's imagine we have a fluoride ion present in solution. And the fluoride ion is going to be dissolved in our polar protic solvent, which is water. And water, being again a polar protic solvent, participates in hydrogen bonding, like we said. And each of these hydrogens in water, remember that the electronegativity of hydrogens like 
and oxygen is about 3.5. So there's a dipole in water, partial positive on hydrogen, partial negative on oxygen. Partial positive, partial negative, partial positive, partial negative, partial positive, partial negative, partial positive. You get the idea. So the partial positive hydrogens are going to line up in a way that they are surrounding this negative charge, this fluoride ion. So in other words, they're involving themselves in hydrogen bonding with our fluoride ion. Shouldn't have drawn that as a straight line. It's got to be a dash. Thank you. So what this means is like fluoride ion, everywhere it goes in water, if that's our solvent, although we could use another solvent like water, like ethanol or methanol, everywhere fluoride goes, it's surrounded by this entourage of, of water molecules, which are hydrogen bonding to it. So it's surrounded by this shell, this shell of solvent. And it's a little bit like the Beatles getting out of their car in 1962, and that they're Everywhere they go, they're surrounded by these adoring, screaming fans. Fluoride is a star dissolved in water in that it's surrounded by all these molecules of, of water which can hydrogen bond to the fluoride. Everywhere it goes, its movement is hindered. So its movement is hindered by the presence of these hydrogen bonds. Now, why is, so how does the hydrogen bonding differ if we go from fluoride to chloride to bromide to iodide? Well, as it turns out, Fluoride is the, of all of these, it's the most basic. It's the most basic anion. And it's actually also going to be the best hydrogen bond uh, acceptor. Okay, it's going to accept a hydrogen bond from, from H+. Plus. And it's, well, it's going to be donating its electron density to, it, to the hydrogen of water. So it's going to be the best hydrogen bond uh, participant, more so than I minus, which is the least basic anion. And it's going to be the worst at H bonding. So, and ultimately what this means is that in polar product solvents, this is going to be more free. The I minus is going to be more free. The F minus is going to be more hindered. And so remember that we define nucleophilicity by rate. So being more free, the I minus is going to be the most nucleophilic. It's going to react the fastest with our electrophiles, whereas fluoride being the most hindered, most sur surrounded by a shell of solvent molecules is going to be the least able to participate in nucleophilic substitution reactions. So that's why we have that trend operant in solvent molecules, polar, polar protic solvent molecules. Now if we move to polar aprotic solvents, these are molecules which also have dipoles. And let's just draw out some examples of polar protic solvents you may encounter. DMSO, uh, acetone is another one, uh, DMF, acetonitrile. I'll just draw out the structure of, of DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. So dimethyl sulfoxide, it also has a partial negative oxygen and a partial positive uh, sulfur, but in, in the case of DMSO, it can't, um, be, sulfur being much, much larger than hydrogen, it, it, can't, uh, hydro, it can't bond with itself in the same way that, that uh, these polar protic solvents can, and that there's no hydrogen bonding. There's no hydrogen bonding, which means that since there's no hydrogen bonding, when we have fluoride ion dissolved in DMSO, it's polar enough to dissolve fluoride ion, but it cannot hydrogen bond with the fluoride. So in this case, these are these are all so all of our anions here are free. And as it turns out, like I said before, fluoride is the most basic. So the most unstable of all of these anions. So therefore, most reactive. And the I minus is going to be the least basic. Therefore, the least reactive.
So that's the trend for for nucleophilicity in solvents, comparing polar protic and polar aprotic solvents. Again, as you go down the periodic table from fluoride to chloride to bromide to iodide, polar protic solvents, fluoride hydrogen bonds the most, therefore it's the most hindered, it's the, it's the worst nucleophile. Iodide hydrogen bonds the least, so it's the most free and therefore the most reactive. In polar aprotic solvents, the trend is reversed. Fluoride, these are all free and fluoride just happens to be the most reactive because it's the most basic, and I minus is the least reactive because it's the least basic.